Hello. Who, who does taping here? Kinesio taping. Everybody does. I say. So, um, I run the outreach program for Tulane and Super Sports Medicine, and we do re clinical research with Dr. Buddy Savoy. We have about five, four studies going on right now on kinesiology taping. The issue is there's not a lot of research telling us why it works. There's not a research out there that proves why it works. Most stuff out there is there to promote a product. But when we did a kind of a meta-analysis of it, we really didn't find a lot of stuff that was objective about it. So we have three, four studies going on now. One study is tomorrow going to present the tape job we're studying tomorrow. But the things that we know that it does, we know it has a neural effect, we know it has a vascular effect for sure. Okay? There are some afferent stem effects that we think help us with joint stability. So there's a lot of things going on that we know works. I just, there's no, we were trying to backfill the research behind it. Okay? We're going to show you two or three techniques that we've started using um, that we really think help us when it comes down to ankle sprains, patellofemoral pain, patellofemoral tracking issues, and, then, and also with uh, arthritic changes in the joint. Most of these techniques, I'm telling you we're doing it because clinically we've seen it done. Our research is kind of behind on why it works. Okay, so it's kind of one of those things, it's chicken or the egg or cart before the horse. That's kind of where we're at right now. Okay, years and years I've been doing McConnell taping with kind of the strapping taping, that kind of thing. The issues we always had with that stuff, there was a very strong tape job and my clients would feel it throughout the day. Okay, most of the things we're trying to do now wants to be somewhat subtle. We're finding that 25% tension on the tape is enough to create enough of a change in mechanics so that it carries over. The idea is I don't want to teach someone to tape themselves in the tape over and over and over again, and I also want them to perform. So if it's an athlete, I want them to be to forget about the tape about an hour after I apply it. So in some instances, I do use a lot of tension. Most instances, I'm at 25%. Clinically and research-wise, that's the most effective tension that you want on the tape. Here's the problem. Most of the time when you tape between, between one clinician to another, how do I document how much that I'm taping? So the nice thing about this tape is that we have, basically we have stretch indicators in embedded in it. So you can tell when it's 25% or 50%. You guys are going to get samples of this. But basically there's hexagons in the tape job. Okay. When the small hexagon becomes symmetrical, that's 25%. When the big hexagon becomes symmetrical, that's 50%. So now you know when you're at 25 or 50% when it comes to loading. Okay, so simple and easy. We're using pre-cuts because we don't have all day to show you this stuff. So from a patellofemoral tape job perspective, also with jumper's knee, that kind of thing, there's two or three things we do. One is that the typical, I want to control lateralization of the patella, okay? So I'm going to actually come here and I'm actually going to find the patella and I'm actually worried about the distal half, okay? Why the distal half? I just want to control the distal half. It seems that that's enough to control it without compressing the patella into the joint. If I compress it, I may cause more discomfort. So I want to still leave the patella floating enough onto it. So I find the distal half of the patella. I'm going to lay my tape down laterally with no tension. Okay. I'm going to come here. I'm going to grab the tape. I'm going to go around the kneecap. I'm going to pull the kneecap medial just a little bit, put 25% tension, and then finish along the kind of almost on the medial hamstring. Okay. Now I'm going to basically wrap, I'm going to activate the glue. And I can, that tape job will stay two to three days. I can also walk up to the tape job and I can look at the hexagon. I can see that the tension is still in it, which in the past, any tape job we used to do in the past, whether it's Kramer tape, J&J, &J, any of the tape jobs, even the McConnell tape, we felt there would be loosening underneath the tape because I had something between the skin and the tape. Now that I'm applying it directly to the tape, I actually can see that my tension is staying. And the clients subcortically forget about it. When they take it off, then we actually two or three days and try and do the same events we would do with the tape that they would be pain free and see if it works. That's kind of the number one thing we're looking for. Okay, back up here. Another thing we do with jumper's knee, especially patellofemoral pain and actually distal uh, patella tendon pain, especially my volleyball players, that kind of thing. We're actually going to do something to actually control the patella. Okay. So I, I got, got the tibial tubercle. I'm just on the medial side of tibial tubercle. Okay, I'm going to come here, I'm going to apply the tape just lateral, 25% tension, I'm going to finish up onto the quad. I'm going to do the same exact thing on the opposite side. Twenty-five percent tension, just lateral, finish onto the quad. Now I've got a medial and lateral bolster and I'm controlling the patella even better than my, my patella braces. The problem with our patella braces is our athletes will actually come underneath the, the brace and actually the patella will not be controlled unless they're somewhat bent. 
they go into full extension. Sometimes that's when the kneecap actually tracks laterally or tracks medially, and then they go to flex, and we got pain. Okay. So with this, I'm actually with a med my first tape job brings the patella medial into a neutral position. Then I've got a me medial and lateral stay that will hold it there. Okay. So forget all this is here. I've got my arthritic knee that comes in that has just pain with with loading. Here's two tape jobs that we know works, and I really can't tell you other than the fact that it's a neural effect as to why it works. Okay. Uh, switch the other knee, right. So, I've got someone that when I go and evaluate, I know I've got some compressive issues on the lateral side, especially with the, uh, either the, the joint line, maybe the fibular head, that kind of thing. Simple and easy, I take my tape, break it in the middle, okay, open up the tape, and I actually take the tape and I put 25% tension on the lateral joint, apply above it, and below it. Simple, simple, simple. I'll do both sides and we'll see a 10 to 15% decrease in pain and they'll feel control. Now I'm pretty much sure that it's an afferent input into the joint because I'm almost, almost using a, the gate control theory by using the tape. So think about it as a neural effect. More and more we're finding there's a fascial, neural, vascular effect, effect of the tape and this is kind of where we're getting at, okay? Now, do I still mow the fibular head? Yes. Do I still do my joint mows? Do I treat? Do I dry needle? That kind of thing. When it comes to soft tissue treatments in our facilities, I can tell you we use instruments first. I'll do cupping. I'll do dry needling, some combination thereof. If I cause bruising or, or any type of tissue damage, I'm going to be doing uh, kinesio taping on top of it. Okay? If there is a mechanical issue, I'm going to try and fix that mechanical issue, but subtly. I'm not going to fix it all the way. Okay? Uh, I can do the same tape job on the medial joint line as well. Uh, I can actually do, if I have an issue with fibular head mobility, then your knee. So I'll come here, and let's say I have an issue with the fibular head mobility. We can tape the fibular head from posterior and come medial with it and cause kind of a rotary position of the fibular head and it actually makes a big difference even with ankle mobility because usually the fibular head being stuck is an issue. If I mob it, I'm going to kind of hold it in a position for a period of time and it's going to piston better there and the rotation of the fibular head becomes more uh, an easier thing for them to accomplish. Okay, So let's talk about the ankle. Is this the one you had taped? This uh, one? This let's flip around. All right, so perfect. All right, so we have, we cover 20 high schools in our area. We have athletic trainers everywhere. Our athletic trainers do not, did not like the tape. Why? Because it costs more than regular tape. They didn't understand how it worked, okay? What they're finding now is that because they can load the tape and it stays loaded, we're using the tape kind of as a neural input for lateral ankle sprains for a period of time. So they'll use, kinesiology tape and if they want to do a tape job over it they will but when they cut their tape job off our tape stays on okay and it stays on for two to three days okay I don't our triathletes some of our endurance athletes will keep it on for a week I don't really promote that they get this the the uh, new skin they'll spray over it and get the stick whatever um, so basically if you think about oh look at that nice scar so <laughs> you're the perfect model I know. <laughs> this is before we taped her so I mean <laughs> So what we're going to do is the anterior telefibular ligaments there, if you think of the calcaneofibular ligament here, any of those lateral ligaments that are going to cause that medial sprain, okay? I'm going to hold her in a neutral position, okay, right there, okay? I'm going to kind of find kind of underneath navicula. I'm going to start this underneath navicula. Okay, I'm going to come. I'm going to apply 25% tension over the anterior telefibular ligament. I'm going to finish here. So I've got that 25% tension here, okay, and that's going to stay. So I can walk by later, or my athlete can come by during lunch, and I can look at their ankle, and they're still getting that afferent input, that, that stability, okay? So for us, this is kind of a, we're not promoting it with our trainers just yet, but we would rather them just do this tape job. My soccer players, my volleyball players, they don't like braces, okay, especially with the soccer cleats that are so small right now, they don't want to change cleats. So this is a very non-intrusive way. Now, with a severe sprain, yes, I will probably brace them, that, but as I'm migrating away, this is also something that, guess what, the athlete can do it themselves. This isn't brain surgery. I can teach them how to do this, okay? We sell this tape to our parents because now I can teach the parent 
how much tension to put on because of the tension indicators and they're in the ballpark with what I'm doing in clinic. So they feel and the athlete feels, wait, it's the same way as you did it before, mom, dad, whatever. Okay? So it's not something where they're just anchored to, some, to a professional to do it. I can teach them how to do it. And right now, I mean, I'm seeing my athletes maybe one to two visits a week during season if they can get to me from the high schools or from the college. So really, they've got to do something else when I'm not around. And for us, this is kind of an, an, another adjunct to what we're doing. Okay. As an addition to that, we have scissors. Don't worry about it. We'll just use long pieces. Come on. Now, come off the, hold that neutral position. Okay. We would take a smaller piece. Okay. But we're also doing almost kind of a basket weave effect here. Well, we'll come here and we'll come around backside and we'll kind of finish with two pieces here. So now I've got a lateral piece that's, that's kind of holding her foot up into eversion. And I've actually got another piece that's creating compression over the lateral joint line. This is kind of, if we had to pick our combination for ankle sprains, this would be it. All right. Uh, let's talk about, uh, we did plantar fasciitis. Let's do plantar fasciitis. Okay. So plantar fascia pain, 90% of my clients come in, it's going to be soleus issues, right? Gastroc medial calf is the origin of it. Causes the calcaneus to be pulled medially, then they step on the ground and the ground pulls them back the opposite way and the tensile point is somewhere in the plantar fascia. So we want to unload that, okay? So let's, uh, is that one full of oil? That's all right, we'll use it. We'll try it, okay, on your stomach. Okay, so, so if I'm gonna treat her, I'm gonna treat there, okay? So that's where, that's the anger point. So <laughs> I'm gonna do two things. I want to tape over. So the other thing we're finding with the tape, if I have a muscle that's, in, that's hypertonic or hypotonic, if I apply the tape over it, I get a change in tone. If it's hypotonic, it becomes more active. Hyper, it's like weight bearing in neuro. Remember weight bearing? If it was hypotonic, you weight bear, oh, it got better. If it was hypertonic, it got better. That it's, we keep playing back to that neural effect. There seems to be something that affects it. So we're going to do two things, okay? So if I got plantar fasciitis, I'm going to hold her in neutral. I'm neutral just a little bit, okay? And I'm going to come off the calcaneus here. So right under the calcaneus. And I'm going to find that area that I treated with soleus. Apply 50% tension all the way up. And if I had a longer piece, I'd go all the way up to the medial calf, okay? So that's going to be what I'm going to go after and treat. I'm not going to, I used to, we taped the whole calf. It was kind of a waste of time. And I've got to get to the medial component. If I go laterally, I, it's hard for me to get to soleus, but I can get to soleus medially. Now, did I grasp in this? Did I do hawk grips to this? Did I dry needle this? Did I do, I, I did a bunch of other stuff. But when they walk out of the facility, I've got to do something to change that tone for a period of time. I'm not going to win. The other way I'm going to do is, which gets kind of cool, we're going to create a pseudo arch here, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to come here. So I went on the lateral calcaneus, okay, hold her in neutral. I'm going to come around the calcaneus, 25 to 50% tension, finish underneath navicula, and go towards her pinky toe. Thank you, Vanna. Come, <laughs> come back down. All right, so make sure that's stable. I'm in the same position here. And about all the things that we've been finding, this makes a huge difference with anyone with midfoot pain, okay? I'm going to start laterally. Again, around, underneath the vicula, finish, first med head. So now what I've got, I've got, I've affected got soleus here with tone, and now I've got a medial and lateral support of the arch. And what I'm doing, I'm actually creating that short foot so that met heads and calcaneus come closer together. If I can get that to unload, because as soon as they weight bear and that separates, that's usually when they have pain. If I can give them some support there, it makes a huge difference with pain. Do I do orthotics? Sure I do. Guess what? They get out of bed in the morning, what's the first thing that happens? I'm in pain as soon as I put my foot on the ground. 
I mean, so this for us, on top of the fact that I'll put them in a boot at night, I'll do all those other things, but I've got to not create that inflammatory process day one. Got it? Any questions? Just want the stamps and t-shirts? Go. I have uh, clippers in my facility. We, oh no, we're all about hairless. Yeah. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work. So we'll, we have clippers and we'll clip them down. I mean, of course we get permitted. You want to do it, I'll do it. Um, uh, you know, it's, the application is the key with all these tapes. You have to have clean skin. You can't take, so their body temps up. So I wish it would work better when they're sweaty because if I was on the field and something happened, but like if a player gets hurt at the first quarter, halftime I'll try and calm everything down and get them, I'll actually chill the area get it back to a steady state so there's no sweat, then I'll tape them and then I'll, and actually I'll do a, a wrap on top of the tape to hold it on and then keep it on. That's kind of the, the only downfall is that you cannot do, if they're sweaty, it doesn't work. Uh, so it's not a real good of acute injury thing. It's a good, once we know it's there, can I treat as I go? Um, skin irritation is based on tension. If you over tense it, the edges are gonna cause pain because you put too much tension on it. That's why we're migrating away from just having to do it. Now, tomorrow we're presenting a shoulder tape job that we're studying, so I'll just kind of go over that. We have, uh, so right now we have seven players on the Tulane's baseball team, our seven pitchers. They're gonna go six innings. At that sixth inning, they come out of the, if they go six innings or more, they're part of our study. They come off the field, we go through a recovery program like we would do with every player, but before they leave, we're gonna do a tape job to their rotator cuff to unload it for 24 hours. Then we're gonna do MRIs, and we're gonna do measure uh, we're gonna measure thickness of the supraspinatus and also the distance between the cuff and the AC joint. If we can hasten their recovery and decrease the inflammation for 24 hours, then we've hit Nothing, we saw them once today. Vent after the event. So if my player goes home and sleeps on that shoulder, okay, I decrease blood flow to the rotator cuff. Then they get up the next morning, they go and toss with somebody like an idiot, because they're all idiots. I think my injuries occur somewhere along those lines. So if I can unload, protect them from them, I make a big difference as far as longevity. If I do that, then that's where we need to go with Little League Elbow. Little League, my, when it comes down to my Tommy Johns, every Tommy John that we have that comes off, that gets back to full recovery, ends up with bicep tendon pain and t increased tone no matter what. They're lying if they don't. We're treating it all, there's nothing wrong with them, but the bicep still thinks that we have a def deficit in the, in the UCL. We're now doing preventative kinesio taping to the bicep to, to bring the tone down during an event. So they'll wear sleeves or we'll have the nude colored and they can pitch with it. And we're noticing we're not treating that proximal bicep pain or that, that mid belly pain that we did before. It, it, we're seeing where this stuff can be used in, as, to accent a deficit in the body because the body's still trying to rectify itself and it's usually a neural cross, cross up. We can, we're good, but, but we're not that good sometimes. We've only got them for two hours in a week. So we're trying to do things, and it's, it's getting more exciting, but the neural effects and then some of the mechanical effects that are there. Anything else? Any other questions? Guys, the tension indicators in the tape. Here, everybody just take samples. Take, take, take. It's the coolest thing that I've seen in a while because now I can actually, I feel comfortable selling this stuff to a mom or a dad and honestly, our students know how to tape quicker because they get it. They know what 50% tension is. Give it, share, 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 share. Just hand it out, hand it out. I can't keep it. Any other questions, guys? How long do you recommend people keep it on for, like at max? 24 hours is what I tell them. Up, so I've had clients call me up, hey man, I'm feeling great, can I keep it on? Sure, keep it another day. Two days for me is a limit. I think the skin will just get irritated. Some people are bulletproof and invisible, but then I got other people that are, if they're fair complected, if I just see that they've got some issues, I'll, I'll hold them off. Uh, older adults, that's the one thing I'm, I'm kind of tentative about. So if you got the older adults they, you know, that, that maybe have some cuff issues, I kind of watch that. I'll tape them in clinic and then remove the tape. Uh, the, other, the other thing to keep in mind is when you're removing the tape, a little, uh, little advice, pull at a 180. A, to, on top of the tape, don't pull at a 90. If you pull this way, much less pain. And if you follow it up, if you pull and then just scrape the skin behind it, they don't feel it as much. Um, if they're freshly shaved legs, it doesn't stick as good. We like a little hair. Um, usually my guys, it's okay. 
What else? What else? Uh, guys, the taping techniques you've learned at the courses, origin, insertion, origin, that's all great. But if you understand the anatomy and understand the fascia, if you tape along fascia. Don't tape based on linear movements. The body is all about crosses, right? Tape, tape in the areas that you see the fascia, especially in the low back. We're taping now in crawl positions now for low, low back pain. So it makes a, why? Because that's how we move, right? I want them stable with one arm forward, one leg forward. I want them to feel the tension, not linearly. We don't move in those planes. So don't, I mean, the courses are great, but man, if, <laughs> if you took anatomy and you understand how things move, tape along those things. That's the best way to learn how to do this, okay? Thank you guys.